Hello and happy Friday. Welcome to the channel. This is the first official real estate video that I'm going to talk about and it's going to be a video that's really before you start your journey, the pre-journey. And we will get more into the exciting stuff and how you can have very high returns, you know, 25, 35% cash on cash return or have properties that you invest in and you can get you know, triple or quadruple back out of it in the next two years or two years after that, you can refinance. And we've got some properties that I will tell you about that are pretty cool like that. But before that, most of real estate, I'll just be honest, it's really boring. It's, there's nothing exciting or new or fancy. And you probably, uh, we didn't do anything special that anybody on out there hasn't either taken a course or read a book and figured out how to do it. I never went out and signed up for super expensive uh, courses or seminars and go into things all the time. Really, I just listened to books and put the principles into practice. So I thought today I would kind of take a back a journey back in time to 2010 when I started working, well actually before 2010, some books that inspired me to consider investing in real estate and then also things along my journey that equipped me to have the money and the resources and the discipline to be successful at real estate. So let's jump into it. The first thing in my journey, I was a weirdo. In college, I asked my parents, you know what I asked my parents for? For my 21st birthday? Of course you don't. But what it was, I actually asked for Financial Peace University. So Dave Ramsey, you can see this update in 2006. This is old CDs, right? I got it with the class. But for my 21st birthday, that's what I wanted. I wanted Financial Peace University because I wanted to really understand how to budget. And I believe that if you are thinking about investing in real estate, one of the most critical life skills you can have is living on a budget. I don't like the idea of living below your means but I love the idea of Kiyosaki's phrase, living to expand your means. And being able to live on a budget to know exactly where your money is, tell your money where it's going to go, is going to help you do that. Our budget has been the single most important thing, for, both for unity in our marriage and for allowing us to have the funds we needed to invest in real estate. So if it doesn't have to be... Um, Financial Peace University, it can be something else, but figure out or find somebody that's good at budgeting, figure it out and figure out how to live well below what you earn so that you can set that money aside to reinvest. So that was my first step in the process was learning how to budget and that was back in college. The next step was I started reading books on real estate investing. And when I think about real estate investing books, there's so many out there, so where do you get started? I will recommend a couple of kind of what I call philosophy books, really how the mindset should be and what do you want to be thinking about to get started. All of these books, if there is an Amazon link, I'm going to put a link below. If not, you can go look them up on your own. And I will say this, I'm not sponsored by anybody. This is really just what I've used and what was beneficial for me. So the first book I don't have with me, um, I like to listen to most of my stuff on audio but the first book is going to be Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Fantastic book. Um, it doesn't get into the nuts and bolts of how to actually do real estate, but it's big picture, really good stuff when it comes to what does it look like to think different than a regular W-2 employee and how could you set yourself up to replace your income long term. So I really recommend that book. It's a tale of two dads, a rich dad and a poor dad. And the rich dad and the poor dad, it's not that one made a lot of money and one didn't, but it's a mindset between the two. And I think that's a really good book to just get your mindset right. The other one is kind of a fun book. It's called The Richest Man in Babylon. And it's a set in ancient Babylon. And again, it's just kind of a, how do you uh, have a mindset of having your money work for you? So I really recommend both those books. There's really good stuff on both on just discipline and living a very consistent life that's gonna be essential for success in real estate. 
if you get past that and you start listening to other books and you get into, I don't know what kind of real estate I want to invest in, but I just kind of want a broad stroke picture and more tactile or more um, application focused on how to do something, this is the book I recommend. It's by Robert Kiyosaki. It's called The Real Book of Real Estate. And this is comprised, he's got all of his advisors, or maybe not all of them, but he's got a lot of advisors that write different chapters, whether it be on law or whether it be on accounting or different kinds of investing in real estate. It could be from residential, multifamily, commercial, retail space, developing, changing zoning, all sorts of things for investing. And I really, really like this book. This is like the encyclopedia for um, real estate investing. And it is not an easy book to get through, but it's worth it if you just want to kind of figure out what's the vision and direction I'm going to take in my real estate journey. So highly recommend that. The other thing I'm going to recommend, and all of these, well, I will say this. The Real Book of Real Estate was... I, I read this after I owned a couple single family houses and I really liked it. So that's why where that came into play. And then this was very early on. I only owned one property and I invested in this game. This game was not cheap when I bought it. It was, I think it's actually less than it was when I bought it. But regardless, it's not a cheap game. This is called Cash Flow, and I like to call it Monopoly on Steroids. Again, this is by Rich Dad or the um, Robert Kiyosaki and his group. And I cannot tell you how canny this game is to my life. You're going along and you feel like you are not going to make any progress. You've bought one or two rental properties and you're just like, I'm never going to make it out of the rat race. And getting out of the rat race is the goal of the game. The rat race, what he calls the rat race is, or getting out of the rat race, is when you get to the point that your passive income surpasses your monthly expenses. So... But you will feel like there's no way I'm getting out of the rat race. I've got two, three properties, and then you sell one, and your cash flow goes down a little bit. But then you buy a big deal, and all of a sudden, things start rolling fast. And that's exactly what happened with my story. And I play this with friends, younger folks that are trying to get into real estate. And I love playing this game even to this day. We probably play it at least every other month or, or once a quarter with somebody, some other couple. And this is a really good game to kind of... Get your mindset on what do these different deals look like and kind of get that feeling of this is very slow. I'm not going to make it. And then all of a sudden things tend to speed up. And that is kind of the pregame. Before you even get into real estate, these are some of the books that I recommend. Um, I will start to tell you about investing properties and how I saved up for them and kind of the discipline that that took. But I just wanna say, as I share this journey, I really believe that Anna and I, my wife and I, we didn't do anything special. What we did is we were extremely disciplined and we did the same thing over and over and over. And that's really what it takes. It takes extreme discipline. You don't have to be, have a super high IQ. You just need to take the steps. One afterthought, because of those books, it did change my career. I started um, with Rich Dad, Poor Dad right out of college. I started reading it, and I had gone to school to be an engineer, but one thing Rich Dad said is, no matter what you're going to do, you need to learn how to sell. So I actually shifted from planning on going to school, being an engineer, getting my MBA and climbing that corporate ladder to saying, no, if I need to learn how to sell, I'm going to do something else. And Kiyosaki says, you know, you should take a job for what you're going to learn, not for what you're going to get paid. And that's exactly what I did. And, you know, I went and I went into fluke sales, technical sales at fluke, and it was a fantastic career. And I really did learn how to sell over those 13 years. And it really has helped me in this journey. But all of that has come back. If I look back on it, has come back to this pre-game. Looking at these books, reading these books before I got started really has changed both my career and my post-career. Um, so hopefully this was a fun video. I know it's different. It's a different setting. I'm sitting in my Bronco, um, my retirement vehicle from Fluke, and 
maybe you'll see more of this because I think that I'm going to be doing more videos maybe as I'm driving around from property to property and just talking with you guys. Again, leave questions below. I'm going to continue to share more of my journey, but I want you guys to ask questions because I know you guys have a lot of questions because people keep reaching out to me via the telephone asking me questions. So I know you guys, the viewers, have questions as well. Thanks and take care. Don't forget, there are going to be affiliate links now below for anything that I do mention that I can find affiliate links for.